The Murder Challenge. I did it. See it over there. Six victories, zero losses. I'm gonna share those six battles with you. How I did it and with what deck I did it. And then we're gonna open this beautiful chest we got there in that Murder Challenge. And we're also gonna open the clan chest that I have here. Let's go right into the battles. In the first one here, my star deck, I don't know. I got the Inferno Dragon there and the Mortar. And yeah, he plays the Mortar very early, so I have to drop something to defend that Mortar. I dropped the Night Witch because those bats uh, should take out that Mortar. And yeah, also the Night Witch log actually countered those goblins and now the Night Witch took out the Mortar, but he's got that Dark Goblin. <laughs> And I place my mortar, and he placed the royal trident right in front of my mortar. That's that moment where I'm ve very happy that I have the Inferno Dragon. Of course, uh, <laughs> he gets some shots at my tower, but the royal giant is killed by the Inferno Dragon. My Inferno Dragon actually also approaches his tower. Come on, Inferno Dragon, you can do it! Little burn there, and he also has the Inferno Dragon. That's what I thought here. Dang, he also has the Inferno Dragon. I play a Night Witch to defend against the Inferno Dragon. He plays the Goblin, so I place also the Ice Wizard to freeze that Inferno Dragon and freeze those small units. And then, bad luck, he also has the Executioner there, which is actually a Night Witch killer. You know it. And I still drop the mortar there. I don't know what I thought. Uh, I drop a bandit. The bandit takes out the dark goblin very quickly. And also the bandit just died. But my mortar is connected to the tower. And my mortar gets some shells at that tower. And he already drops another royal giant. Yes, but my inferno dragon is ready. I'm slightly ahead here. And he drops a defensive mortar there, maybe to lure my Inferno Dragon, but the Inferno Dragon still goes for the tower, so that didn't really work as planned. And my Inferno Dragon almost took the tower, and the Night Witch just finished the job. <laughs> she did it! And yeah, he's dropping an execution, basically from now on. I'm playing the mortar defensive. And try to score with my bandit there. You see how my bandit actually takes out that mortar very easily. And I actually wait a bit here to get that Inferno Dragon to my side here. And I miss! I miss! I miss the Inferno Dragon and the mortar. For my excuse, I have to say this. I was lagging. I dropped the rocket about two seconds before it actually started. At least felt two seconds and it was showing a sign here in the live battle. It's actually not live because you know, playing live and recording is way more difficult than playing and recording afterwards. So I dropped that rocket and it didn't deploy uh, until it was too late and I missed the mortar. <laughs> that's what happened. So that's my first victory. In the second battle, I actually counter an opponent with minions. And that's actually, you will see that in the other battles here, the minions, that's actually the worst thing to battle against with my deck. It, I really struggled most against minions with my deck because I'm not that good in defense against air. I actually switched my arrows here for, uh, I think, Inferno Dragon. So I'm not really able to defend against those minions that well. Uh, still, good start here. Actually, my mortar gets some shells at the tower. I also drop a bandit and the bandit connects. He doesn't defend that bandit. And then he deploys a mortar. He deploys his own mortar. And I'm able to distract that mortar right on time. And actually, his left tower is already in rocket range. He's able to get the mortar locked to my tower. I don't know if that's bad or good actually here because my mortar then locks to his mortar and destroys it without being attacked. attacked. <laughs> and there's the minions. And uh, yeah, as I said, I don't really have anything against those minions. The only thing I can use is distraction with mortar and night witch. And sometimes the inferno dragon, but you may know the inferno dragon is actually not that good in defending against minions. 
And so there is another bowler approaching. That's no problem for my deck because my deck has the Infernal Dragon. There's also Pekka now. Look at this. Burn, Pekka, burn, Pekka, burn, burn, burn. I was a little worried when this happened. I thought the Pekka would get a hit or the bowler. But actually, surprise, surprise. The Infernal Dragon took them both. That's amazing, and so I drop another mortar here to keep pushing on that lane too. And now you see basically here uh, the minions. I can't really do much against those minions. They will get the mortar. I only have a bandit here to go against the Dark Knight. And somehow, because of the minions, that Dark Knight actually survives and gets a stab at my tower here. And I'm only able to defend too late with the Night Witch. So my tower there took a lot of damage. Now I want to play it safe. The Mortar taking his tower there, still 40 seconds to go. I play another defensive Mortar here to try to protect that tower. I also have the Infernal Dragon ready, uh, but you see here basically there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, there is this Ice Wizard defending against the minions, and the minions get some shots at the tower. The Infernal Dragon protecting the Night Witch doing work, a lot of stuff going on, and somehow I managed to keep that tower alive. But he takes it. He takes the tower. And yeah, now I have to take another one. <laughs> and I try a counter push there with another mortar. But you see, I really struggle against those minions. Those minions against the Infernal Dragon. Woo! Those minions against the Infernal Dragon. I can't really get to that tower yet. Uh, also here, my Infernal Dragon just killed again by those minions. And the minions again going for my mortar, and the only thing I have here is the ice wizard. And my mortar's gone, and he drops another Pekka. So that's very dangerous. I have to defend that Pekka, but I also have to try to take a tower because I'm not gonna be happy with a draw. Draws are for chicken. <laughs> we don't want the draw. So I'm distracting that uh, Pekka there. Uh, I also draw, drop an Ice Wizard to slow him down and then finally, I'm, also the bandit helps, I drop an Infernal Dragon and I'm able to take out that P.E.K.K.A. Uh, I'm also able to take out that Bowler of course and he already drops another P.E.K.K.A. So this is basically the moment where I have to try to push before that P.E.K.K.A. reaches my side. And he also drops the mortar and you see again the minions are kind of his best defense here. The minions do a lot of damage to my units. My infernal dragon survives. It can take out the mortar but in the meantime he already has a strong push going on my side. And so another infernal dragon trying to defend there with that infernal dragon. And again very close but it worked. I was able to defend. It's such a tough battle here. Now, I got a strong push going here. Many troops survived this. The bandit taken out the Dark Knight. And actually, when I drop this mortar, the same moment, basically, his mortar is gone. But again, those minions lock to my mortar and it only gets one shell fired at the tower. <laughs> That's not much, come on. But he's pushing. And now I rocket his tower. Try to bring it down. We have only one minute to go. It's such a tough battle here. Uh, and I think it's mainly because of those minions. So I got this push going on there with the bandit. Hoping the bandit connects and that actually works. He defends again with the minions. Now his tower is at 489. So I need a log and a rocket to take it. But I also have to defend that Pekka. Now there's my first rocket. And I already know. Yeah, actually the rocket was enough. <laughs> now I remember. The rocket was enough and I won the second game in the Mortar Challenge. So I think it's actually a really good deck I found here that I played in that Mortar Challenge and I may play that also in other challenges and try how it works there. So here in the third battle I'm playing against a Battle Ram Mortar deck. You really meet strange decks in that Mortar deck challenge. I'm, I'm dropping a bandit here. Again, the idea is that Bandit will stop that <laughs> Battle Ram and stop his Mortar. And that works kind of well, actually. We are able to take out his Mortar and my Knight survives. My Bandit gets a shot. I protect with Night Witch, but actually now my Mortar is gonna die. 
And, but the Night Witch is very dangerous and she's at the tower almost. Another bandit. Bandit stopped by those archers and dang. But, I got a nice lead here. A very nice lead from that first few interactions. Attacked one more time. I played the Mord there to take his tower. He drops the giant. Of course, the Mord is distracted by the giant. And now, this. <laughs> this is the moment where my Infernal Dragon comes in very handy. It will take out that giant and he also plays tornado but that doesn't help. My infernal dragon locks to the tower and there's a zap to delay what will happen. The night witch again completes this job yes and in the meantime I dropped the bandit on the other lane and that bandit is also doing a lot of damage. He had to defend that night witch and that gave me a good chance to deploy the bandit and my second mortar uh, my, my, my mortar there already doing damage on his second tower and again I'm defending that giant um, with the infernal dragon and there's also a battle ram so here it's kind of close it's really kind of close here trying to stop the battle ram battle ram was stopped slightly before it connected to the tower and so my night witch knight and dragon are able to stop that push defense with another mortar now I got a strong push going with all those units there bandit kills bandit infernal dragon kills mortar uh, another defensive tornado but it's not gonna help my mortar is gonna connect to something <laughs> yeah it connects to the tower that's really bad luck for him and also my infernal dragon connected for a short time another hit and then he tries another giant but again the infernal dragon is so, so great in this deck. It really help, helps against all those tanky decks. Second rocket, second tower, and all his dreams for victory are gone here with that second tower. It was a good game. Uh, easier one than the one before. That's three of six. Battle number four. Again, against uh, another special deck. You see it already here in the replay. It's a balloon deck. A balloon deck. And so I'm pretty weak at air. The only thing basically I have is Night Witch, Ice Wizard and Infernal Dragon. And I gotta defend with that. I'm dropping the Bandit here because the Bandit is a very good Mortar killer. And you see how that works here. That Mortar has been killed pretty easily. And now my Night Witch, Night Push there together. But they're stopped by the Executioner and the Witch. And so this actually turns into a dangerous counter push and I play the more defensive that's basically why I want to distract them I play another bandit bandit is awesome and he charges into that execution and takes him out his baby dragon is able to connect to the tower and slowing it down slowing it down freeze baby freeze and there it's gone it did a little damage but that's okay it was necessary to get some more elixir and I'm still playing defensive at this very moment. You may say I'm slightly behind, but that's okay. I'm playing it defensive right now. I'm actually waiting for that giant to counter it with my Infernal Dragon. Now when he places the mortar, I also have to play some ground units. And yeah, I decide to drop Night Witch, but she was a little bit too late. And so his mortar actually connects to the tower. Again, I think after all, this is not even the worst to happen. Because the mortar didn't do the damage to my troops. It took some of the tower, but my troops arrived. And so those bats there finally get to the tower and can do some damage there. I play my mortar once again to push it. There's the balloon. And I panicked a little bit at that very moment. I dropped this infernal dragon. The balloon is on its way. And the giant, giant balloon, very strong combo. Uh, but I'm able to burn both of them, the giant and the balloon. And there's also the Electro Wizard. And uh, that usually, you know it, that really is a problem for the Infernal Drag. But somehow my units, it's a, a big overkill there. So many units on the map uh, just for defense. He drops another baby dragon. He's not really filling his elixir. He's just trying to defend or pushing, I don't know. And so I drop another Infernal Dragon too to take out his baby dragon electro wizard of course prohibiting me from doing so bandit charging into the electro wizard that's why i did it and also the knight there 
going for that stuff. Now I play a Mordor there. The reason is, this Mordor again gets a shell to my tower, but my Mordor will help me defend. It will go against his Mordor there. And trying to build a strong counter push here. Now I got many units like Infernal Dragon, Bandit, Knight, a uh, big counter push going, hoping that one of my units may connect to the tower. I'm also burning his witch, and now I play a rocket. Uh, that rocket hits, of course, the tower, but yeah, it's very, very painful, very painful to progress here and do damage. It's very dangerous. Again, there is a giant and baby dragon. Again, it's all up to that little infernal dragon there, but he plays Electro Wizard. And then he heals up the giant, but the bandit is working overtime and it's still able to take that giant. And so this arrived by bandit charging into the mortar. And I play my mortar now. And can I get there? There's already the next baby dragon. This is such an intense battle here. Again, I have to burn stuff here with my infernal dragon. Burn his giant, burn his baby dragon. It's such a strong push that he's doing there with giant, balloon, baby dragon. And the only weapon that I really have against this is night witch and infernal dragon. And here I basically decided I should better rocket him. It's only 1 minute 30. If I'm able to defend and rocket him twice, that's tower. So that's what I did here. Um, actually, it was a little mistake there. I couldn't pull his baby dragon to the mortar, but my infernal dragon took out the baby dragon, so I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. We're getting closer to taking his tower there. And um, yeah, now the rocket there, and that's game. <laughs> well played, very tough battle. Only one minute of overtime remaining when I did it. That's battle number four. So at that moment, it was already 4-0 and I was getting a little bit nervous because it took me only two more victories to win 6-0. But I had three chances, so I just imagined this is the very first battle. Trying to forget everything that happened before and played it like it's a new battle here. Maybe that's the secret. And so he defended my first mortar really well and he tried to push the other lane with his mortar again. The bandit turned out to be a great defense against mortar. Um, I might take his mortar. Uh, he's able to defend, so no clear advantage here in that very first push. <laughs> now, he plays that furnace. That furnace! The furnace can be such a pain. And so my mortar going for his furnace. And his fern is going for everything I drop. It, it, really, it can be such a pain. And, and my mortar can't lock to his tower as long as there's the furnace. But we get no. We get no shell here. But we get another bandit. And I hope to get that bandit connected to the tower. And dang, that works. And the bandit is doing a lot of damage once it connects to the tower. And then he plays a mortar behind the bandit. I don't know exactly why. That mortar will do some damage. But the Night Witch... Uh, the bats, especially from the knight, should take him out really quickly. He also plays the furnace to defend the mortar, and that works. Mortar gets some shells, but finally my log kills it. And now we got to take care of that furnace. A very tough one. We're ahead. Actually, we can win this with only two rockets and maybe uh, one or two logs. And so I play a defensive mortar. Uh, it's always important when you play mortar decks, and I know that because I play many mortar decks. Um, it's always important that you know when to attack with mortar and when to start defend with mortar and rocket. And that's what I did here. I started defending and rocket his tower. Again, I used the bandit for defense. He's trying to protect his mortar with a bowler. And that's where I have to use my infernal dragon once again. Infernal Dragon is the MVP of this deck, really helping against all those tanks. His mortar is connected, but it's not going to be enough to do a lot of damage there. He's in rocket range. And so I play the first rocket there, and first tower gone. 18 seconds, you know what's going to come. He's trying to mortar my tower, 
Uh, 11 seconds is not gonna be enough to take my tower, so I basically just have to drop units there, defend that all once again with another Inferno Dragon, and that's game. <laughs> that's battle number 5. And now into the last battle, I was really nervous, 5-0, would I lose 3 times in a row or would I win the last battle too? I didn't know. And there we go. Breathe. Breathe and go into the last battle as if it's the first one. And I I tell you guys, I was so nervous here. This would be my first 6-0 victory if I win this one. So I'm playing the knight. I didn't have the best starting hand there. I had to play the knight behind and then play the mortar afterwards. And he has a lot of defense ready by the time my mortar would fire. And it's another deck with minions! Those minions are so tough for me with this deck. Uh, really, I have to play the Ice Wizard against the minions, the Witch, or even the Inferno Dragon, and they all don't really deal well with minions. He plays a Mortar, I'm going against the Mortar, and he protects his Mortar with minions. And you see it there, how those minions take my Night Witch and my Knight. It's really difficult. His Mortar gets to connect to my tower. And that's also why I started playing already a defensive mortar here at the very beginning because I saw he's got so many units there and he's got that minion, those minions there, it's gonna be hard. And here I'm lucky here the bandit, my plan works and the bandit gets some damage down to the tower. But I'm behind. I'm behind. So it's gonna be very close. And actually there is another mistake, I dropped the Night Witch way back and that gives him a chance to connect his mortar to my tower once again. But on the other side my troops are not attacked by the mortar and are able to go against the mortar. So he did damage, but my troops were able to take out his troop and the mortar. And now I counter with my mortar and the bandit, he tries to defend. And also Night Witch again, the minions there. The minions taking out my Night Witch. And yeah, they also go for my Mortar. And I have to rely on the Ice Wizard once again and my Mortar just dies. No way to do damage. This is such a tough battle and honestly guys, I thought I'm gonna lose this. I thought I'm gonna lose this. Then I said, come on, you can make it. Just keep trying. Just imagine it's the first battle you're doing. And so I played again, I played, I played like this is the battle. And I took out his mortar there, again his minions take out everything I got. I'm distracting his mortar with the ice wizard here. So his mortar going for the ice wizard. I'm playing the inferno dragon to take his mortar. And I'm also playing another bandit. That bandit takes out the mortar, that bandit attacks everything he's got. He plays a rocket and... There's actually a little mistake there, that rocket didn't hit all of my stuff. Maybe it wasn't possible, but it was a well played rocket actually. But, think of this, if he plays that rocket against my tower, he would just need one more rocket and win. That's how close it is and I'm actually behind. And he plays, now he tries to surprise me with the lead bobs, but they, they die very fast. I play another mortar. He plays minions once again. Those minions will take my mortar. My mortar only able to fire one shell. And now look what happened. I was able to catch up. Now he rockets the tower. It's getting very close. He locks my tower. My tower on 193. I got his tower on 500. I rocket his tower. And I need to cycle to the lock. And he needs to cycle to the rocket. This is really a battle of cycles. He already has his rocket. But there's my lock. And just slightly before his rocket hits, my log takes his tower. That was very lucky and very close. And that's a 6-0 victory. Now, as I promised, this is the chest I got. And drum rolls. We're gonna open it now and see what's inside. Come on, please give me Night Witch this time. Please give me Night Witch. Let's open it. 
let's open the border challenge chest. And after that, we're also gonna open the clan battle chest. There we go. We get gold. Inferno Towers. Goblin Gang 22 and the Will. <laughs> Isn't that kind of disappointing when you win a 6-0 challenge? And this is what you get. <laughs> but still, I'm very happy I made it to 6-0. Now let's open the clan battle chest. It's a 7-10 clan battle chest. Gold minions. The Royal Giant that I don't do. I'm always getting Royal Giant in the lead box. It's so weird. The Bomber. The Giant. Did you notice? I can upgrade my Giant to level 9. The Prince. And we get a Legendary. We get a Legendary in the Clan Chest. What is it? What is it? Maybe the Night Witch. Finally. I don't have the Night Witch on my main. Let's click it. Drum rolls. It's a lumberjack. <laughs> but at least it's a legendary. Awesome. One more legendary. It's not a bad chest though. That's it for this amazing mortar challenge. I hope you enjoyed. Have an awesome day. Bye.